Let's get back to it. Continuing down the corridor, we came across a rather sturdy looking door on our left. A little further on stood a doorway, a stairway leading upward. Well, this door's clearly meant to be keeping a something safe. If there ain't some kind of treasure behind it, me name ain't Kid. Yep, that's the smell of cold. Uh, <laughs> yep, that's the smell of cold hard cash. All right, she muttered to herself as she began to inspect the door more closely. Yeah, why not? Let's go. <laughs> bah. What am I stupid? Of course it's bloody locked. Kid had tried the door handle a few times before giving it a grumpy kick. Bloody door's got a magical barrier on it, and the bloody barrier's got a barrier of its own to boot. I'll ta it'll take more than me putting me boot to get through it all. I see, then unless we find the key, we don't have any hope of getting inside. Reckon I can handle the key hunt, especially if that idiot Lynx is who's hidden it. If we can find his room, I'll sniff it out in two seconds flat. Just you watch. Go back towards the terrace. We'll just go back to fucking Lynx's room then. Uh, we continue on. Short walk in the terrace came to view. Uh, keep following the corridor. Left hand side. Uh, went downstairs. Bottom, split into atrium, to the right, go to the passageway on the right, down the passage on the ornate door, right hand side, Riddle's room, continued on our way, walk, 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 Lynx's room, kid eyes lit up, <laughs> uh, we went inside, I knew he wouldn't be here. We started looking for any signs of the key to the vault. Maybe she can help. Uh, maybe she can help, said Kid, thrusting her chin toward the mirror. I gently pulled the soft cloth from the mirror and stared, and stared into the glass. Here comes the screen. It was dark on the surface of a lake at night. Boom, boom. steps. Whoops. Uh, continue on our way. Uh, passage toward the stairs leading upward. Stairway was short. I'm going to climb the stairs. Let's go down the side passage. Side passage. We headed down the side passage. At the end we came to an old immaculately polished door. 
We went inside. Kid Jelly pushed the door jar. <laughs> the next thing I knew, she'd slipped inside and McGill and I followed. Looks like a steady. The room was lit by moonlight coming through the long, slender windows, slanting down in pale beams through the darkness. Ooh, that's the study, all right. It was pretty big for a study with an immaculate antique desk dominating the center. There were rows of bookshelves lined with thick, dusty old tomes. The wall to the rear of the room was decorated with paintings and shelves and vases and painted plates that stood before them. They all seemed to be curios from foreign lands. Right, let's find this key. Light on her feet as always, Kid moved into the center of the room. That mess saying the thing was against Edge. She, she was asking me, where was I supposed to remember? Uh, purple cover? Purple cover Why is the game so loud and my voice is so small? Oh, okay. Uh, that might be a me issue. That's a good question. Okay. Oh, okay. Audio. Okay. I am doing well. Editing a vi video for YouTube. I know that can be nice and uh, confusing. Audio display message. I didn't know I was so so quiet. Audio sharing. Uh, sound and devices. Adjust microphone level. How's that? Is that a little better? How about that? How about that? How about that? How about that? That any better? That's good? Okay, good. Yes, sire. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm playing Radical Dreamers. Uh, the... I wonder if I can change the audio in the game. Um, oh, whoop. Right, this one. Pepper cover, pepper cover. Ah, this has got to be it. She pulled out a book from the lowest shelf. If I can do it, it's an old game. McGill and I watched as she flickered through the pages. Her eyes narrowed like a cat's as she read through the arcane script, which meant nothing to me. Let's see. Yeah. The stricken Neo Epoch was flung into stasis, making an emergency jump without playing, deploying phase shift. Major engine damage. Output is 30% of operating norms. Six charges remain in the anti-particle cannon. Shields effective in 16 sectors. L-spin response on the... Starboard stern. Enemy vessel incoming. Gadah! Hurry! With the awakening, skirmishers make ready for our last stand. <laughs> at least I, at least you can hear my voice. It's all it also might be if you're listening with headphones, it's probably gonna be pretty loud. Uh, hell is this? It ain't got nothing to do with what we're looking for. Is this another one of your stupid jokes, Serge? As if I could have predicted what the book said. Boy, I'm talking to you. Where's the real book? It's a purple cover. I guess it's in the furthest. I wonder if I can save right Can I? Can I save? Can I save? Purple cover in the far. Purple cover. 
from a farmer goose. Uh, um, I think it's supposed to be the one with the purple cover in the farthest bookcase. All right, let's see. Right, this one, purple cover. Ah, oh, this gotta be it. Kid pulled out a book from the bottom shelf. McGill and I watched as she opened it. The pages were hollowed out, and hidden inside was an old key decorated with strange symbols. Hailed it. Nice one, Serge. Kid snatched the key from inside the book. Right, time to finally get a look at this treasure. Having got what we came for, we left, uh, we left the study. Okay, let's see, I can, s I can save. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, hey, you can do surround sound, that's pretty cool. How would you like to hear this game in mono? So, one problem causes the game is so old that I don't even know if it'll if it'll actually um, let me change the volume for it. Like, yeah, I don't even think it's a uh, I don't even think it's a it's a thing. Hold on, let me. Let me see if I can find the um, controls. How do I make the controls show back up? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's an option, my friend. We're just gonna have to. Uh, gonna have to ride we made our way back down the dark passage leading from the study eventually we arrived at an intersection still some stairs led down quarter branch left and right uh, right branch leading back towards the terrace uh we're not going down the stairs we'll take the left branch we continued onward past the stairs the side emerged the main corridor ornate double doors this is it okay kid gently pushed the heavy doors open and peeked inside. Doesn't look like anyone's in here. It seemed to be the main hall of the manor. There's a massive table. This isn't where we're supposed to be. Uh, beautiful decorations on the walls and thick columns decorated with sculptures of birds and beasts. Fixed to the wall in the back toward a tremendous pipe organ like a uh, towered a tremendous pipe organ like a burnished black mountain. Dozens of candles provided a dim, flickering light, sending the corners of the room dancing in and out of the shadow. Several enormous portraits glowered down from high on the wall. Were these members of Lynx's family? I was busy staring at a painting depicting a young husband and wife when I realized that their eyes had turned to look right at me. Okay, the hat. Don't worry. This isn't about to turn into some dumb ghost story. <laughs> okay, so he's just gonna use this... <laughs> now he's interjecting his own... <laughs> his own personality into the narrative. Oh. Let me wipe my eyes right quick. I hope, I hope you're having a wonderful day if you're joining us and watching this exciting playthrough. Hopefully we don't get knocked off again. Uh, PlayStation Network updated, so I'm hoping that we don't. Okay. Uh, it just looked that way because of the way of the flickering light of the candles reflected against the glossy oil paints. Obviously. Probably. This place gives me the creeps. Get a load of these ugly mugs. Ain't nothing for us here. Let's look somewhere else. Neither McGill and I had any objections. We left the hall and returned to the corridor. Uh, return to the corridor. Intersection. Stairs going up. Uh, we brought back at the terrace. We don't want to go to the terrace. We want to go... We don't want to go down the stairs. If we turn back, 
Kit stopped in her tracks, signaling us with a hand behind her back. She drew her knife and stared into the darkness. We heard the clinking of metal from just up ahead. Goblin guards. It wasn't likely they'd be, there'd be anyone else going for a nighttime stroll among the manor wearing armor. I suggested a tactile retreat. <laughs> I drew my knife and readied myself. I picked up on the situation pretty quick and drew my knife, preparing for a fight. Kid gave me a sideways, sideways glance. You know something, you're starting to look like a real thief. Now you just need to walk the walk, she grinned. All right, Serge, McGill, let's get him. Kid leapt forward, confident as ever. It was like she thought nothing could go wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There were five of them weren't any ordinary goblins, though. Having been well looked at in this palatial manner, they'd grown even bigger than McGill. Each of them was carrying the manner goblins traded, a morning star consisting of a rod and a heavy spike and ball on a chain. Wait, or is it a flail? I can never remember. Uh, and I didn't have time to think uh, much more about it. Goblin came rushing at me. Ball and chain overhead. I met the charge with my knife. I held out my knife in front of me, attempting to pair the attack. Something. Something. The goblin disappeared. I went to the side to see. See it buried in the wall. Arms and legs again. Did you really expect to stop a morning star with only a knife? Your stupidity can get you killed, Shut Turning to face down two more goblins. Grab the falling down the foot, very conventional. Yeah. I grabbed the morning star with both heads and swung it down the wall. Wham! It was a dull thud as the iron ball crashed into the goblin's It wouldn't be getting up any time soon. Look at the book. Moments before, talking, uh, taking on two of the goblins single handed. One head since collapsed. And now, he was trading the world. I couldn't see it before, but it was coming. Oh, I could see it. So it was I wish I could read it. <laughs> I can't read! McGill had come unharmed. unarmed. Uh, that was his style. He dealt with his foes using his best terrible school of magical arts known as the way of the loop. The kid left her enemies awash in their own blood. McGill's were left utterly broken, a mess of bruises and snap bones. It was clear that battle was on Every inch of the goblins was supposed to be magical. I looked over at Kid. Kid was squaring off against two of the goblins. Their dull, lumbering attacks couldn't touch her. She definitely decided to be each and every one, striking back nimbly like a man who held up in her hands. That was Kid's style. A float like a butterfly, a sting like a bee. But stings make for tough going against enemies that can really take a beat. Both goblins were covered in cuts. Their attacks were as powerful as ever. I rushed to help the kid deal with them. The enemy hadn't noticed me. I took my time and chose I attacked the morning star. I gripped the morning star with both hands and swung it all the straight lines. Wham! There was a dull thud as a spring back ball crashing the goblins' home. It should have knocked the creature clean up, but it was still standing.
I have felt something. Hey, hey. I was doing great. I felt like nothing could stop me. Not bad, Serge. Not bad at all. Didn't know you have it in you. There was a mischievous glint in Kid's eye as she rewarded me with a few rare words of praise. Oh. Let's see right there. We continued onward past the stairs on the side passage, emerged the main corridor. We found ourselves in front of some ornate double doors, the hall of the manor. We turned back. Okay, this leads to the hall. Which way is the damn... Go to the terrace. Get stopped. Since it's clearly tingling... Someone very we could hear faint whispering, as if a spell were being cast. And a faint light was emanating from a monster sitting crouched on the flagstones ahead. Oh shit. A long bony finger traced strange shapes on the tiles. A demon <laughs> pulled out my knife and ready myself. my knife and prepared my eyes were deep and it was thin I couldn't tear my gaze on it chuckled and it chuckled uh, it chuckled through the belly laugh as it peered into the very depths of the soul and then just like that Stop me. Didn't know you had it in ya. <sighs> Hopefully the damn demon isn't like isn't like in my soul or something. That would be pretty bad. All right. After a short walk down the corridor, the terrace came into view. Um, kept following the corridor. Uh, Ancient-looking door. On our right. Clock tower. We continued on. Okay. Now I know where I'm going. Sturdy-looking door on our left. Uh, stairway leading up. This door's clearly meant to be keeping something safe. If there ain't some type of treasure behind it, my name ain't Kid. Yeah, cold hard cash. Uh, we went inside. This should do it. Kid slipped the key we found into the lock. Lines of magical light flashed across the surface of the door and vanished as various magical barriers. <laughs> Up, down, left, right, blue, red, green, every color under the sun, and all of all was quiet, and the darkness of the manor returned. Right, we in. With a creak, the heavy door gently swung open. As soon as I saw what was inside, I gave a gasp. Kid stepped inside. Whoa, we hit the mother load. Oh, well. Out of the darkness loomed a veritable mountain of gold, silver, priceless works of art, and exquisite trinkets. Kid looked as if she were on the verge of drooling at the sight of it all. But what thief... But what thief wouldn't have been? After all, this was the kind of hoard that few people would ever come across in their lifetime. The smallest fraction of the 
vast mound of riches would have been would have seen even most careless spendthrifts set for life. Our goal our goal is the frozen flame. Ignore the rest. McGill spoke with icy determination uh, dedication to our mission. He had not even batted an eyelid at the sight that greeted us. Yeah, yeah, I know. She was disappointed, of course, but as soon as we set about scanning the room for the ob object for our hunt. Wait. What is it? Is that it? Look at that pedestal over there. I turned to see what Kid was pointing at. We don't have much time. Quickly, McGill. Quickly, Mag. No whisper. Kid urged you all to. There's no time to waste. We gotta have it now and then before it leaks. If you insist, McGill gently raised his hand toward the fence. Suddenly, a siren rang. The room was flooded, flooded with light, and metal bars slammed down in front of the door. Metallic. Here Parents on the four corners of the room suddenly came to life, flapping their wings and screeching. Peace! Peace! Demon, we walked right into the trap. He quickly turned around. Sir, it's your bloody fault for pretending to hang up. So did you! Yeah, whatever, it's not like you were trying to get him to hurry up yourself. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, it's not like you were trying to get him to hurry up yourself. What? Just hang up the surge? No, nothing at all. I should have been a man with the go get it. If you're going to finish, we had best apply ourselves to finding a way out. The guards will be here any moment now. <laughs> he barely finished speaking. I heard the point when I heard the voices. Which way? Which way? Parents, parents, to the ball, to the ball. The manor guards were coming. Kid. I believe Kid Doe behind a pile of gold coins. Find some light on it. And a hammer gun. There's a large chest sitting on the bottom of the wood pile. I rushed to him and get out. And punched him. Then it hit past him. And first he pulled the wood. Captain. Captain. There's no sign of anyone in here. No sign. Strange. Peculiar. No one has ever escaped before. None have fled the mousetrap's clutches. None. I gently pushed up the lid of the chest and peeked through the gap. There were five goblins wearing suits of armor, unlocking the gate, and about to make their way inside. One of the goblins looked around the room, jerking its neck as he peered into the shadows. Hey, Captain, what, what if it actually was a mouse this time? Chief was grumbling about mouses. Uh, Chief was grumbling about mouses the other day, Captain. A mouse, a rodent, a rat. Would a teeny tiny thing like that really have sprung the trap? Replied a stocky punk looking goblin who apparently spoke very well. Who must have been the captain? He didn't see when I heard a strange but oddly familiar sound from the corner of the room. It was coming from where it was coming from. That's, but it's going to work. Startled, the troop of goblins stopped and looked at each other. For a moment, none of them spoke. Eventually, the goblin captain rubbed his chin through his jowls and offered his thoughts. Mouses, I'm sure. Chief was complaining about cats. Oh, whoops. One second. <laughs> I just, I love this exchange, though.
I love hearing the music that I've heard in Chrono Cross, but like hearing it in this uh, different MIDI version. Shall we? Meow. Meow. <laughs> that voice again. Again, silence. The goblins only looked at each other. Well, you should say that, Captain. Oh, the way I heard it, it weren't mouses or cats. It was a hecran. Oh, a hecran. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a hecran's like a uh, big ass dog pig thing. An awkward silence followed. <laughs> she doesn't know the sound it makes. <laughs> In my mind's eye, I can see Kid racking her brains to work out what a hecarin was. I smell a rat, by which I mean a thief. Following the captain's lead, the guards reached for their weapons and then... Ran, ran, ran. Listen, it really is a hecarin, boy. That proves it. The goblin guards grinned and nodded to each other. Cheeky little devil surprised me there. Let's get out of here, boys. The goblins filed out of the fall. I breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> and then they came charging back in again with a mighty roar. There's no such thing as Ekarins! What? You sneaky little buggers! Roared, crit, roared Kid, leaping out from behind a pile of gold coins. You're one to talk, thief! Brandishing their weapons menacingly, the goblins moved slowly forward, forcing Kid into a corner. I quietly eased the lid of the coffer, and I slipped out. Can't believe you anywhere, can I? I muttered to myself. I knew Kid could handle herself, but I didn't fancy her odds against the whole troop of heavily armed goblins. For a moment, I wasn't sure what to do, but then I made up my mind. I had to save Kid. Right, I had to save Kid. There was no way I was going to abandon a friend in need. That's my ninja way. Even if it meant facing off against a group of five goblin guards, I'd find a way to come out on top. I hoped. I drew my knife from my belt and leapt into the middle of the, middle of the room. A snot for brains! Over here! The goblins all turned and looked at me at the same time. Ten beady, cruel little eyes all staring daggers at me. Fool in a hurry to door, are we? I gulped and wondered if making a run for it might have been a better plan of action after all. Ah, oh, you must so stupid. The goblin captain chuckled and licked his teeth. Yep, that one's got a death wish, all right. What else? Why else would he be so stupid as to come in after Lord Link's treasure? <laughs> That's the first being called dumb by a bloody goblin. Try acting tough when you're crying to your mum later on. Judging by a kid's response, she wasn't feeling massively threatened. And you tell her it was Kid who kicked you in your teeth. So you're Kid, are you? The sneaky little slippery little thief we've heard so much about. The goblin mirrored his eyes. <laughs> Lord Lynx will be thanking me now until my retirement, in which uh, when I bring him your head on a silver platter. The goblin captain pulled out his morning star from his waist and started swinging. You don't know who you're messing with. We ain't got no ordinary goblin, sweetheart. When Lord Lynx is elite guard, the goblins that gobble other goblins. That's right, with the gulp squad. Oh, we'll shoot them out. Stick a foot in it.
them. Same time, try to lose sight. Kid putting a brave face on things as she wiped sweat from her brow with her arm. And then she stopped and looked at me. Serge, what were you thinking, you great dongo? Drongo? Getting the goblins to come after you like that? You really don't have to, have to, you know? Kid gazed at me softly, her blue eyes like the cool glow of the moon. She seemed to be trembling slightly. She looked down at the ground, hiding her face. Thanks. I'll never forget what happened tonight. Even if we go our separate ways. Even if we never meet again. Never. Ah, seems Link has got the... Uh, ah, seems Link has got the better of us. We turned to McGill. What do you mean? asked Kid. We nabbed a frozen flame, didn't we? <coughs> Not quiet. It was a fake. Bait, to be precise. The red jewel in McGill's hand suddenly splintered and fell into pieces, shattering the ground. Gah! That rat... rat bastard! Course he wouldn't... wouldn't do this fair and square. Fair and square? Strange words coming from Kid. 
it seems that our quest for the frozen flame continues. Yeah, but before we get back to it, this bunch of drongos said that they're Lynx's elite guards, right? Bet they got some nice loot on them. With that, she unceremoniously, uh, she started unceremoniously rummaging through the fallen captain's pockets. She was like a hyena sniffing for scraps. Hello, hello, what's this? She found an odd metal plate. It resembled an open hand and it was covered in runes. Reckon this might open some other magic door somewhere. Well, never know. Never know when it might come in handy either. Find escapers. The plate vanished into Kit's pocket. Hmm. Looks like there's nothing else worth taking, unless you count pocket lit and bits of string. She rose to her feet and looked around the room. You know, it's a real shame to leave the rest of this loot just sitting here unloved. And I suppose we can come back for it whenever. Kit turned to face us and flashed a grin. Alright, lads, let's move on. I ain't got... I ain't gonna be dark forever. Uh, it ain't gonna be dark forever. That hand-shaped plate is our only clue for now, muttered McGill seemingly to himself. We left the vault resuming our quest for the frozen flame. Stretch to the left and right. There's the terrace. Or we go up. Or let's go to the staircase. Let's go ahead and save. The corridor ended at the foot of some stairs. With Kid in the lead, we headed up upwards. It was dark and the stairwell was narrow. We watched our footing carefully as we climbed. The stone of the steps was worn smooth with age, and I lost count of how many there were as we spiraled onward and upward. An awful sense of foreboding haunted me. I had no idea why, but it felt as though we were marching to the gallows. When we arrived at the top of the stairs, we were greeted by an old, heavy door looming in the silence. All was deathly silent, and the still, clammy air added to the sense of ominous apprehension. Something's very wrong here, I muttered without thinking. I hear cursed whispers from beyond the door, McGill added, doing nothing to lift the mood. Ah, grow up, will ya? Kid shot back at us der uh, derisively. She was already examining the door. Well, it ain't locked, so I, and I don't hear anyone inside. Well, we gotta go inside. All right, here goes. Kid turned the handle. The door opened with a slow, heavy swing, uh, and revealed what lay behind. <laughs> it's just like game over. Hmm. It was a small, cylindrical room that appeared to be the inside of one of the stone towers. It was completely deserted, and there were no windows. What is this supposed to be? Something about this place gives me the creeps. Still standing in the doorway, Kid seemed suddenly taken aback. There might be something in here. Let's take a closer look. A closer look at a bloody empty room! Might as well, I guess. We did climb all them stairs. Kid stepped through the door, grumbling under her breath. I scanned the room and then noticed something on the floor. The flagstones were covered in dozens of narrow scratches in places where th uh, there were thin black stains. Something in the stains stain spoke of a horror that no amount of Scrubbing would ever wash away a malice and a sadness beyond imagining. There was something written here. Crouching in front of a wall, McGill was inspecting some of the brownish markings that looked like more of the same stains. Someone's carved letters into the wall, into the wall, and scrambled, scrambled them using blood magic. Kid had gone over to take a look. Looks pretty old, hard to read. Some of it's been worn away. Oh, some of it's been worn away. Let's see. I cannot hold out much longer. My only hope now is to leave the Akasian Signet in this room. The Akasian Signet? 
Suddenly, the door slammed shut. We jumped to our feet with a start. From above us, we heard an unsettling creaking sound. The floor was trembling. What the hell is going on? Kid's eyes were on the roof. She desperately tried to figure it out. The creaking sound from above continued. The ceiling moved ominous, ominously closer. Up there! Oh, shit. <laughs> that, that. Oh, we're dead. We've got right to a bloody trap. Kid, 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 kid. We've got to do something fast. We've got time to think about this. Barge down the door. Yeah! Kid strikes the door like an arrow, slamming it into the choke first. It was too heavy. There are light frame cuts. continued for a while, for a short while, before slowly coming to a stop. It seemed the ceiling trap had finally finished its grisly work. Bugger me, talk about a nasty surprise. Is it some sort of execution chamber? McGill continued, seemingly, uh, seeming to be in deep thought. In any case, that writing mentioned uh, Cassia. Yeah, what was what was that about? I asked. The Acacia Dragoons, the elite knightly order serving General Viper, who once governed the territory of Galesburg to the west. Former knightly order, I should say. They were wiped out more than a decade ago by the lord of this very manor, no less. Uh huh. Thanks for the history lesson, Mag. Oh, thanks for the history lesson, Mag. Kid rose to her feet, patting off the dust. Too bad we're not here for a fair tale nights. Come on, we've got a lot more exploring left to do. Very interesting that the Acacia Dragoons in this uh, game are a fallen knight order, where in Chrono Cross they are like um, they're like uh, adversaries for like a good majority of the game. With the idea that General Viper um, was like in a different different um, continent, and you could also say that uh, this game uh, is technically technically could be considered canonical because if you think about it, this game takes place in what would be considered for Chrono Cross the El Nido archipelago, and it is in a dimension that is not the home world or the another world from Chrono Cross. So this could be a third dimension, technically, if you wanted to try and piece it together that way. But it's very interesting um, how um, how it's bridging some of the gaps in uh, um, the uh, between Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross, but at the same time it's sort of like it very much is like a a tale told by rote. Um, it, it, it's like while it was being told and told and told to people, uh, things changed about the story. And so that's something that I like about this. And the part of that is probably just because this is, of course, sort of a prototype for what we got with Chrono Cross. But at, at the same time, it, it, it kind of seems intentional as well. I don't know. But yeah, this is actually 
I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Thank you for stopping in with me. I appreciate it. McGill shrugged silently, and we headed back to the stair. With Kid in the lead, we headed downstairs. Okay, we went down the stairs, continued straight ahead, eventually coming across a sturdy-looking door on our right. That's the door to the treasury. The corridor continued further towards the terrace. Let's go to the terrace. We've avoided it this long. Let's go to the terrace. We went inside. In we go. Kid steeled her breath and reached for the handle. The door was unlocked and swung slowly open. This is the... Oh, this is the, um... The, hello? Any old ladies in here? No, no kindly old dearies. Who know more than they're letting on, lurking in the shadows. Come out, come out wherever you are. Boy, lady, show yourself. Silence of the This was a waste of time. Pronounced Mitchell Flally turning on the table. Who left the old dusty storage room? That was not what I meant, where I meant to go. Uh, left, to the left. After a short walk, uh, the terrace came into view. Let's go to the terrace. We returned to the quiet terrace overlooking the garden. And then, I talked to Ken. Blimey, sir, you're a dark horse, ain't you? You really had me thinking you were just a... Wigan Sook. It was a mischievous blink in Kid's eye. I she rewarded me with a few rare, rare words of praise. At least I thought I could. You, you ain't seen nothing yet. We should go back inside. We're not here for fun. No, we're not here for fun. But again. Well, he said. He said that, but. Turned to kill. You seem to be hurt. Don't push yourself. If I wasn't careful from here on out, I was going to be in serious danger. Right, dust yourself off and let's get moving. We got work to do, so kid. I went back to the manor, I suppose. Back to the manor with us. A corridor stretched off to the left and right of the terrace. The terrace that seemed equally chilly in both directions. I guess we'll go left. Left hand side of the terrace. Uh, going to intersection. Okay, we can go down the stairs, which we've already done. We can go onward to the main hall. Let's go onward to the main hall. Kid gently pushed the heavy doors open and peeked inside. Looks like the coast is clear. We stepped into the main hall. Dozens of candles. Uh, let's see, several enormous portraits glowered. Uh, down from on high on the wall were these members of Link's family. I was busy staring at the pit with the eye suddenly widened. Uh, oh, I was busy staring at, at a painting depicting an intimidating old man with his eyes suddenly widened and he stuck his tongue out at me. No, I was just seeing things again. It just looked that way because of how the flickering light of the candles was, was reflecting off the glossy oil paints. I mean, that could totally happen, right? Definitely. Okay, maybe? This place gives me the creeps. Get a load of these ugly mugs. There ain't nothing for us here. Let's go somewhere else. Neither McGill or I had any objections. We left the main hall and continued. Leading the group as usual, Kid suddenly stopped. What's that? She jabbed her finger at something in the darkness. Straining my eyes, I could see a pale white bundle of something shaking in the shadows. Oh, that's strange. I moved in front of Kid to try and get a better look. And then suddenly, the strange presence started crawling across the floor towards us at an unbelievable speed. I didn't have time to think to brace myself. The white figure reached my foot. It reared up its full height. It was a skeleton. Skeleton. Face to face.
We were done. Uh, we're done here. Let's get moving. I was starting to feel a little worse for wear. I was going to have to be more careful from now on, or this was going to end badly. Not bad, Serge. Not bad at all. Didn't know you had it in ya. It was a mischievous grin. She rewarded me with rare, rare words of praise. Ooh, I'm worried. I'm worried that I'm gonna... D -d die Okay. So, the spirit from the mirror moved to another mirror. And I think there's a mirror in Riddle's room. So that's what we're gonna go... What, what, what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down the stairs. Yeah, we descend deeper and deeper. So we're gonna go down the stairs. And we're gonna, um... Atrium, Reserve, Plaza, Path, Passageway, da 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 da. We'll go to the right, I think. Riddle's room, perfect. Uh, yes, okay, good. We found ourselves in a tidy welcoming room. Knickknacks, curios, they all seem to be well loved, cozy looking bed. Though the room was richly furnished, somehow it felt awfully lonely. Half written letter on the desk, teacup still warm, suggests the lady of the manor was still nearby. A window was slightly ajar, bringing in some much needed fresh air. It seems someone had been here only moments ago. Let's come back later. We left uh, Riddle's room for now. Going right would take us to Lynx's room. Meanwhile, going left would go to the atrium. Uh, let's go to the fountain, I suppose. I really think that I'm about to die, but we're going to go to the atrium. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, shouted Kid, glaring at me. Are you telling me to swim through a bloody lake of piranodons? Yeah, you can count me out, mate. How was I supposed to charm charm me victims with big chunks bitten out of me? I guess she had a point. Here's a better plan. Why don't we go back to Beauty and... Back to Beauty and try sticking something down his gulp. Sure enough. Uh, she pulled out her odds and ends. Do I have to, I asked, knowing the answer? It's probably just as well, since Kid only glared at me in response. My hand hovered for a moment before I finally reached something. I chose. We're going to do the thread, and maybe if we're... Handshade plate. I'm going to do the thread and see if I can get uh, healed. It's made by Royal Silkworms. Deeper in the mouth, and then a slight tug came back around my feet. At the end was a small piece of paper. Nice, there's just got to be a clue. The note says try again. <laughs> you licky tricky piece of g Kid ripped the paper in rage and threw it away. Then started kicking the mouth of truth. McGill was leaning against the wall watching the spectacle in silence. I'm guessing that wasn't the one. What's next? I chose. Oh, okay. We have the hand we have the hand shaped plate, so we're gonna put it in the the mouth. Okay took the hand-shaped metal plate we found. After taking another look at the runes, there was no clue. We were no closer to working out what they might mean. Here goes nothing. I stuck the plate in the mouth of the truth's, uh, in the mouth of truth's marble maw. As soon as I did, its eyes rolled upwards and the wall gave a light judder. A low rumbling sound came from the sculpture's mouth. This indeed, this indeed is the ultimate truth of the universe. Did you hear something? Y yeah. I watched the mouth with it in confusion. Its great marble tongue lolled out, almost like a snake. It coiled around the plate, seizing it, pulling it deep inside. What the? What's going on? In a panic, I looked for, to McGill for answers. It seems this in, ineffable truth of the universe has left even the mouth of truth tongue-tied. Gil answered in his usual deadpan manner. I think he might have even been trying to make a joke. 
payload, so the plate thingy revealed the truth of the universe. Take some water, right quick. Ah. The plate thingy revealed the truth of the universe. And. And you went and crammed it down the beardy's gullet? Do you realize how much we could have sold that for? on the side of the room suddenly opened wide. The red water formed edges of its like a wind. Pull out a dawn and walk away from the sea. Only trickle of water was up. Slowly dripping away. Well that's a stroke of luck, ain't it? Guess we won't be sleeping with the fishes tonight, grinned Kid, looking at the empty pool. We crossed the drained room, making for the exit on the other side, and pressed on. We went through the atrium and continued down the corridor before finding ourselves at a fork in the road. The corridor stretched off to the left and right. Hmm. Well, this is new, so let's... <laughs> this is new, so let's go left. We continued down the corridor, eventually reaching an old, rather sturdy-looking door. Bloody marvelous. Another bloody door with a bloody magic barrier on it. Wonder what's inside. Sixth sense tells me it ain't treasure. The kid whispered back to us as she examined the door. I suspect that this is the manor's dungeon, replied McGill. His eyes closed in concentration. I can hear the sound of someone moaning in the darkness on the other side, but there is nothing we can do, and thus it is of little concern to us now. Let's turn back. No way of getting through the door, we retraced our steps down the corridor. Kit suddenly stopped. What's that? She jabbed a finger at something in the darkness, pale white bundle. Uh, that's strange. Uh, da 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 da, white figure, full height, it's a skeleton. <laughs> was a leather bag on the ground containing a sparkling gem now we're talking kid's face lit up with joy not as fine Serge what a beaut kid snatched snatched it away leaving me to settle for the compliment I was starting to feel a little worse for wear I was gonna have to be more careful not bad didn't know you had it in you Okay. After making our way down the dark corridor, we came to a branch of the path. Go to save. Path to the right would take us to the atrium, so we'll just keep going straight. We continued down the dark, dank corridor until some stairs leading downward came into view. Well, let's go down the stairs. Suddenly we crept down the... Oh, slowly we crept down the staircase, descending deeper into the shadows as we went. At the bottom, we found our, ourselves at another intersection. The dim, narrow passageway branched left and right. Took a left. We continued down the corridor until it ended in a large door covered in scratches and odd marks. Above the door was a wooden plate. It bore, bore the legend, Guard Room, in elaborate calligraphy. Well, well. Reckon this might be where to find the key to the door upstairs? No getting past that bloody magic barrier without it. Kid pressed an ear against the door and listened carefully. Doesn't sound like anyone's in there. Kid opened the door. The room had seemed completely silent from the outside, and so we thought it would be empty, but there inside was a lone goblin sitting in a chair with a book in its hand. A light 
steam drifted from the teacup on the table in front of it, and with it, a delicate aroma. The goblin peered at us cautiously over its spectacles. There was something different about this one. I could tell as much at a glance. Heavens, how rare it is to have guests. Heavens! A well -spoke, how well spoken for a goblin. I could only feel dread and suspicion at the sight of him from the west. Sorry, mate, but we're not your guests. Caught up. Cough up the key to the dungeon if you want to live. Kid slammed her knife into the table to illustrate her point, but the goblin didn't do as much as flinch. Ah, oh, you must be killed. Uh, what a pleasure this is. I have always wanted to meet you. Why, you're even more ravishing than the rumors would before the goblin could finish. Kid's knife flew through the air. With a cut, quick flick of the wrist, the goblin caught the blade on the back of his book a mere inch from his face. I see your approach is as radical as the name of your merry band would suggest, the goblin said, pulling the knife free and handing it back to Kit. She took it without a word, but her gaze had changed. She was like a cat cautiously stuck against brandy. And I was just getting to the good part, too. Oh well, I suppose I shall have to give up for up on ever finishing it now. The goblin casually flung the book over his shoulder into a nearby bin. Allow me to introduce myself, if I may. I am Grismeld. I am the god on watch. No need to stand. Uh, no need to stand. Please, take a seat. You're welcome to tea, of course. The goblin beckoned us to sit down. Did he mean to poison us? If I may. Uh, if I may. McGill calmly took a seat, ignoring the obvious suspicion of the air. Sat next to McGill. I decided to trust McGill's instincts and took a seat next to him. He had some kind of plan in mind, I was sure of it. Kid didn't look like she'd be pulling up a chair anytime soon. She was standing with her arms crossed. I ate the goblin suspiciously. The goblin poured three cups of tea. Here you are. Without the slightest hint of hesitation, McGill took his teacup and looked it into his lips. He sipped and then placed the cup back on the saucer. Kill Malayan tea. Not a blend I'd, I'd expect to find here. What a pleasure it is to encounter a fellow connoisseur. Yes, it's a rare blend and one mainly enjoyed by the noble classes. I couldn't believe the conversation I was hearing, but I also couldn't help wondering what this rare tea might taste like. My eyes rested on the cup that had been poured for me. Couldn't shake the fear that it might be poison, but I also couldn't ignore how delicious it smelled before I knew that the cup was in my hands. This is great, I blurted out. I never had such a delicious brew in my entire life. My aches and pains faded away, thank God. Oh, I glanced over a kid who was blowing menacingly, menacingly at the liquid in her cup. I'd forgotten that she was paranoid about burning her mouth on things. Now that we're comfortable, let's get down to brass tacks, as they say. I do indeed have the key to the dungeon as you surmise, but you also be aware that I cannot simply give it away. I glanced over a kid again. Typical. She, was, she wasn't listening to a word as well was saying. She was still huffing and puffing at her teeth. I suppose that means you want something in return. You'd like to know what I want. I want your heads. Uh, or rather, I'm sure that's what my employer would have, would have me say. But no, I have no such barbarous aspirations. Furthermore, I doubt I'd be a match for you. Griswold chuckled as he said this. Ha oh. What I live for is the joy of conversation, which I fear my compatriots are ill equipped to supply. Perhaps you might have one or two ripping yarns to share. Grinning, he added, I'm sure notorious thieves such as yourselves have more than a few thrilling tales up your sleeves. So he wanted to hear a story. That seemed more than fair price to pay for the key. And thought. Aha! Uh -huh. I know just the story. How did it begin? One night, a young girl was walking alone in the forest. And 
bit. She was searching for a golden sunflower, only to be the only way to go. Uh, yeah, she was searching for a golden sunflower, the only cure for her mother's illness. Then she walked and walked with the sunflowers. Going before. The fragments I remember seemed about right. There was only one way the story could end. I took a breath and began my tale. One night, a young girl was walking alone in the forest. She was searching for a golden sunflower, the only way to cure her sick mother's illness. She walked and walked, but the sunflower was nowhere to be found. And then, in her moment of darkest despair, she saw a brilliant light. It was none other than the golden sunflower she sought. The young girl gratefully pocketed the sunflower's seeds. These will surely save my mother, she thought. She rushed home to give them to her, and her dear mother was hale and hearty once more within days, and they lived happily ever after. That, that was beautiful, murmured Kid, wiping a tear from her eye. <laughs> Grisbelm frowned. Not quite what I was expecting, and not the most riveting of tales, but I suppose it will do. Uh, you should have read Reader's Digest, then. The key, as promised. I took it from Grim, uh, Grismel's hand. Something didn't seem right, though. Was he really going to give it up so easily? And was it really all right to trust such a strange goblin? Grismel seemed to notice my suspicion. He leaned back into his chair, looking at the ceiling. When I was a young tyro, a uh, braver, stupider goblin. I once served General Viper, who was lord of this manor until he, betra- he was betrayed by Lord Lynx. Despite my boorishness, Lady Riddle always saw something in me worth a praise. Wait, Riddle? What's Lynx's adopted daughter got to do with anything? Oh, you don't know. Riddle's real father was none other than General Viper himself. What? Lord Lynx spared Lady Riddle's life so as not to snuff out that of the frozen flame. It's an uncanny stone, you see. has a life of its own, and some kind of spiritual bond with Lady Riddle. If only there was some way that I could free my lady from this nagger. Alas, I am powerless to do such a thing. Of course, I would have no qualms if, say, you were to topple the usurper. I assume you intend to slay the old beast, I mean. It was a strange inquiry to make so casually. Well, if it comes to it, I was more than taken aback by the directness of Roosevelt's question. I'd never expected to find one of Link's own guards asking me something. Suddenly, I was shoved aside. Not if it comes to it, we're going to kill him tonight. And kill him good. It was Kid, of course. And, in exchange, I'll have some more. But at tea, to make with us. To take with us. Kid held out her hand before Cruz Mel could offer an answer. I suppose I have a bag I can share. Cruz Mel shuffled awkwardly in a seat as he retrieved it. As ever, I was impressed with how Kid's uncompromising attitude and willingness to speak her mind seemed to always give her what she wanted. Bonser, sit tight and leave the rest to us, mate. Stowing the bag in her pocket, Kid took the job. You can trust me, I'm a girl on me word. That might have been the biggest lie she ever told. Roy, let's get moving. She made for the door with a spring in her step. We left the room and Grisville behind. Well, that was interesting. We left the room and took the left turn down the corridor. We followed it for a while before coming to an intersection. Uh, there's a staircase directly. Uh, we pressed on. We followed the corridor for a while before coming across a small door. 
you a whiff of that. Something smells good, whispered Kid, sniffing at the air. We, I didn't mean to go back. Uh, we're gonna turn around, and we're probably gonna get a random encounter. We turn back. Follow the corridor. Small door. Get away for that. Something smells good. We open the door. Blimey, it's a small ki kitchen. This is a very small kitchen. Must be for the serv- Must be for the servants, commented McGill. I scanned our surroundings. A basin for washing dis dishes, cooking utensils, some food made ready for tomorrow, and a mouse trap. It looked like any other commoner's kitchen. Kid walked over to the large pot filled with food and peered inside. Looks like tomorrow's lunch. Wanna try some, Serge? I was feeling hungry. Timidly, I peered into the pot. It looked like a stew. It didn't smell bad at all. Almost inviting. I scooped some up with a ladle and brought it to my mouth. Gulp. It was... it was delicious. Mmm, stuff's delicious. You should grab a bowl, kid. I urged between bites. Kid was looking at me again, staring at me intently. In fact, like she was searching for something. Well, you ain't getting going green or nothing. Guess it's safe. All right, I'll have a try. She licked her lips with anticipation and swiped my spoon right from my hand. Fancy a taste, Mag? No. Kid grabbed a bowl from a nearby and began spooning out more. I did the same. The stew was still warm and it felt as though the magic of fresh home cooking was easing my wounds, so I thank God. Suddenly, a little voice rang out. You there, young man with the braid! Kid froze. Oi, who you calling a bloke? <laughs> Kid barked angrily in the direction the voice was coming from. A mouse looking at us with eyes like saucers from inside of the mouse trap hanging on the wall in the, in the corner of the room. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You're a young lady, I see. The, mal, the mouse bowed its head in apology. Please, kind young lady, hear me out. The mouse put its paws together and started pleading with good. Aw. I left the nest to find food for my mother. But you can see I managed to get myself caught in a trap. If you leave me here, I will surely be eaten by the goblins. Kid eyed the creature suspiciously. Eaten by goblins? Wait, that's stew. Putting two and two together, Kid ran for the sink. <laughs> I beg of you, please free me from this trap. My mother is sick and she'll be terribly worried about what has become of me. The mouse was clearly begging for its life, but there was an odd little glint in its eye. Meanwhile, Kid was at the sink. <laughs> oh, I'm never gonna get that taste out of me mouth. I'll be bugging if I'm hung around here any longer. If I'm hanging around here any longer. Kid had returned from the sink only to stamp off toward the door. She was looking very green around the gills. C kindly young lady, I, I don't suppose you could free me first? You got yourself into this mess, you can sort it out yourself. Kid all but spat out on the ground as she left the room. The mouse's eyes welled up and, as it looked at me. Young man, please, you're my only hope. I, I gotta free the mouse, this is gonna be a bad choice, but I'm, I'm healed up, why not? God, fine. Unable to bear it staring at me anymore with the pleading eyes, I lifted the cage and opened the door. The mouse bounded happily from inside. <laughs> the mouse gave a wicked chuckle. You poor naive fool. Suddenly its body began to balloon massively in size. Oi, Serge, what are you doing it? Kid stopped in horror. <laughs> Booker me a griffin! Most creatures I 
breathed a sigh of relief, running a, running a hand down my chest. All right, little mouse. Now it's time for the real show to begin. Oh, now it's time for the real show to begin. Kid walked up to the griffin, cracking her knuckles. Oh, please, kindly young lady. This is all a misunderstanding, a terrible misunderstanding. Panicking, the creature leapt to its feast. feet. You can't kill me. I have useful information. If you let me go, I promise I'll tell you everything I know. Everything. Yeah? I know how much a promise from the likes of you is worth. Kid took another step toward the griffin, not skipping a beat. Rock, please! Kid kept on coming. The griffin kept, a sh kept on shrink uh, shrinking away. Enough! McGill called for Kid to stop. Let's hear it. Oh, oh, thank you, kind sir. The griffin was beside itself with relief. <laughs> Spoil my fun, do ya? Grumbled Kid, pouting as she turned away. Listen well, O merciful Savior. Right thrice, left twice, right twice. Let's see. Right, thrice, left, twice, right, twice, okay, that, that should help me, just got that written down. Alright, so... Should you find yourself trapped in one of Link's swirling snares, remember my words. Oh, okay. With that, the griffin returned to its mouse form and disappeared into a small hole in the wall. Trapped in Link's snares? Ha! <laughs> As if we'd be thick enough to walk into one of his traps. Let's get out of here. We've wasted enough time already. Kid turned on her heel and made for the door. We left the kitchen. We already did. We've been trapped multiple times. <laughs> like we'd be trapped. We've been trapped multiple times. Leaving the room behind us, uh, we took a right turn down the corridor. We followed it for a while, coming to an intersection. Staircase going up. Okay, we gotta take the stairs and go to the to the prison. The passage soon ended at the foot of some stairs. Kid of the lead, we tar started taking the um, narrow staircase, found ourselves at the end of a long corridor. There was a fork in the path, we just keep going straight. Uh, keep going straight towards the cell. Right. The key we got from the creepy old goblin should do the trick. Kid slipped the key into the lock. The heavy door groaned slightly as it swung <laughs> slowly. Clammy air rose up around our feet as if crawling blindly through the darkness. This didn't seem like the kind of place... Let me save right quick. This didn't seem like the kind of place anyone in their right mind would visit voluntarily. We pushed the heavy iron door the rest of the way open and stepped into the darkness. There was a row of cells, all locked behind iron bars. One, two. Oh, Gulliver. Melikid. Soranda, forgive me. Please, please forgive me. We heard a voice from the third cell whimpering and crying pathetically. I strained my eyes to look inside. Faintly in the darkness, I could see something that looked like a man sitting on the floor. So this is this was the source of the voice. Boy, you all right, mate? Kit called out to the figure. Forgive me. It's all my fault. It's my fault. The dragoons never deserved this. 
old man didn't seem to respond to us at all. He only sat, facing the wall, begging for forgiveness for who knows what. Hello, can you hear me? Asked Kid, trying again. There'll be no getting through to him. His real self will have long since retreated inside the shell he has created, said McGill, cutting her off. Shell, what do you, what do you mean, I asked. He has built a shell around the core of his psyche in order to shield himself from the truth. He is running from something, something terrible. He has seen something or been through something, or has done something. And so he has created his own world on the inside as a final refuge, the outside world lost to him forevermore. I looked at McGill in surprise. I had detected a hint of unspoken sadness in his words. And for some reason, he was looking at Kid, watching over her as she stared at the man in the cell. Seeming to notice my gaze, McGill turned back to face me, assuming his usual emotionless expression once more. We live in a world of sorrow and foolishness. It's only inevitable that some would try to escape it. But despite his, hand, his hard words, his eyes retained a certain softness, his steely gaze giving way to a gentle light. Do you understand? I think so. I gave a slightly evasive answer. You seem confused. I don't blame you. You'll come to understand eventually. McGill looked at me and Kid. What was that about, I wondered. We're not going to get much out of him. He's miles away. We just better leave him be and try someplace else. Kid made for the door of the dungeon. Wait, called McGill. We must find some way to get this man to speak. What for? I mean, he's speaking already, just none of it makes any sense. What do you have to? Some things he said piqued my curiosity. He mentioned dragoons and riddle too. So you said the dragoons are ancient history. No, oh, so you said the dragoons are ancient history, snapped Kid. Besides, how can we trust anything he says? He's clearly gone off his rocker. She had a point. The old man had long since cut his ties with the, with the real world. What did McGill expect him to say? Without missing a beat, McGill replied, We simply have to bring him back to reality. And how are we going to do that? You want me to do a little dance for him or something? See if that goes, gets his motor going. Please don't. <laughs> I knew if I said anything, I'd get nothing but an earful for a lifetime in return. So I clapped my hands over my mouth to save myself. What are you playing at, Serge? Kid seemed un unimpressed. Phew, that was a close one. I don't think that would work, said McGill dryly. Kid's fir fist flew towards, uh, straight towards his face, but McGill shifted his weight effortlessly, avoiding the attack, and continued. We must break through the shell he has created and drag him back to the real world. And in order to do that, we need some kind of key, something that will reach him, even though the bar uh, even through the barrier he has erected. Yeah, where are we going to find this key? asked Kid suspiciously. I don't know, came McGill's simple reply. But there is someone in this manner who can tell us. You don't mean... You're not talking about Riddle, are you? I am, McGill replied with a nod. All right, fine. Don't know where the heck you expected. What you expect us, her to tell us, though. Kitten turned on her heel and made for the door. We left the gibbering old man in the dungeon, alone with his sorrow. All right, now it's time to try and remember how the hell to get back to Riddle. I followed Kid and McGill back through the corridor. After making our way, there's a branch in the path. Okay, we gotta go through the atrium. Okay, we went right through the atrium. We arrived back in the atrium. An exit leading to Link's and Reynolds' room. Uh, we continued on. Okay. Um. 
to the right a passage to some stairs. I think we go we just continue down the path. This is Riddle's room. Okay, perfect. was no stranger to luxury. Richly furnished, somehow it, f it felt awfully lonely. Uh, give me just two seconds. I have to change controllers right quick. This will be just a moment. Testing, testing. One, two, three. All right. Back at it. Let's see. The room was richly furnished. Somehow it still felt awfully lonely. Is someone there? Came a voice of a young woman. We shrank into the shadows. The woman appeared from deeper within the room. She was lightly made up and had a gentle unthreatening air about her. It was Lynx's daughter. Strange, I'm sure I heard someone. I was at a loss as to what to do for a moment, but before I'd had any time to do much more than hold my breath, Kit had already darted over and thrust her knife out, stopping the blade only a hair's breadth from the woman's neck. Where's the frozen flame? Answer me! Her voice came out in a harsh growl. I rushed rushed in to hold Kid back before she hurt the poor woman. Kid, do you really have to do it this way? Shut your trap, Serge. Riddle couldn't help but giggle as she watched us bickering. What are you laughing at? Kid shot Riddle a harsh look. It's just, you don't seem like thieves at all. You little... You want me to cut you, girl? I'd be surprised if that knife could cut anything. <laughs> For a moment, I felt faint, imagining Riddle on the floor covered in blood. But then, clang! Kid had thrown her knife to the floor, and I saw that it was only a letter opener. <laughs> Didn't think you'd notice. Whatever, I'm not here to mess around killing the likes of you anyway. I have no desire for bloodshed either, Riddle said in a voice that was almost a whisper. I'm not your enemy. In fact, I, I want to help you. There wasn't a hint of hesitation or deception in her voice. Let me guess, you're trapped in the manor too. Riddle only lowered her eyes sadly in response to Kit's question. The frozen flame should never have been allowed to fall into Lynx's hands. Riddle spoke wildly.
this room okay now we need to go to the trap corridor we need to go to the left to the atrium we need to go up the stairs uh, we're gonna go up the stairs we go just straight down the corridor until we get to stairs go up the stairs uh, uh, towards the terrace, towards the study. Uh, we'll take the passage to the study. It's past the study. Uh, nope, we're going the wrong way. Yeah, we turn back. Right branch to the terrace. Kept following the corridor. Okay, good. Yeah, now we're going the right way. It's very interesting how they designed the game. It, it's um, it's in a way that like with the pictures and everything, you can sort of find your way. Uh, we continue on. Uh, let's see. We continued on, go up the stairs, okay, this is the room where the thing comes down, okay, look, I don't care what we might find in there, even if it could lead us to the first flame, I ain't going in until we find a way to deal with the trap, McGill, meanwhile, was lost in thought. I don't mention an ancient blade, the Unlanser. Without it, I doubt we could we would have any way to pro progress. Hmm. Well, that means we're taking our search somewhere else. I'm happy to oblige. Okay. Well, then the main hall. Because I thought we got the. Huh. Okay. Continued on. 
towards the terrace. We continued on. We're gonna follow the corridor. Uh, to the main hall. Strange here's, here's the darkness, turning my blood to ice. I realized that a pair of crazed blood red eyes were staring to the depths of my soul. <laughs> wasn't feeling too good. I started to feel a little worse for wear. I was going to need to be more careful from now on or this was going to end badly. So the fights are sort of scripted, but they're also slightly different. Like um, the last fight, like I jumped back and that was all I needed to do. So this fight, I was trying to jump back and I still got hurt. So uh, IDK. Uh, it is pretty cool, so so it's kind of random, but it, it kind of it makes the it makes the fights at least a little more engaging. So that's good to know that I don't have to always do the same thing. Um, and next fight with a Griffin, I'll probably test that out. I'll probably do something different. Um, let's see. Not bad, Surge. Didn't know you had it in you. Uh, she rewarded me with a few words of kind of praise. Main corridor. Double doors. I'll go ahead and save since I'm not dead. Uh, we went inside. Kid gently pushed the heavy doors open and peeked inside. Looks like the clo coast is clear. We stepped inside the main hall. Dozens of candles proved, provided a dim, flickering light, sending the corners of the room dancing with shadow. Uh, they winked, but no, they didn't. I was just seeing things. Okay, maybe? Please give me the creeps and loads of all these ugly mugs. There's nothing for us here. Oh no! Where the hell do we go? We need a Lancer, but we don't... What? Oh, now I'm just confused. Do we go back to the old man? Is that all we had to do? Oh, no. Okay, um... I'm just gonna go to the study right quick. I wonder. I wonder if there's anything in the study. Okay. I wonder if the goblin would tell me anything. Well, hell, we're just gonna go to the left, left, left. Uh, to the. That's the terrace. Whoops. Uh, keep following the corridor. Uh, 
This is the way to the clock tower. Turn back. We need to go down the stairs. Keep following. Path to the stairs. We'll go down the stairs. We're going to go to... Let's go talk to the goblin right quick. Uh, passage on the right. Gotta go to the atrium. Back in the atrium. Uh, we pressed on. Left to right. Left toward the dungeon. We'll go down the stairs. Oh, we're gonna go down the stairs. As we keep going down the stairs, uh, we're gonna go to the guard room. Go in and talk to my boy. Oh! Hello again. Grismeld gave a slight bow of welcome. I look forward to hearing to hearing the tale of your exploits tonight. Hmm. Instead of sitting uh, sitting round on your arse waiting to hear from other people's stories, why don't you get out there and make a couple of your own? His only response was to chuckle with wry amusement. Weird. Wry? Yeah, wry amusement. And with that, we left the room. Okay, well, that was useless to us. I guess I go... We can't... I guess we're just gonna go back to the prison. Do we just, like, tell him about Einlanzer, and then he's like, yeah, that's right. Towards the cell. All right. The old man's plight preyed on my mind. Could he see how senseless it was to punish himself for that? Come on, let's Come on, let's let's make it quick. He won't want us hanging around for long. And I don't want to be. I, I don't want to stay any longer than I have to. Fought Kid Miguel back to the corridor. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, the <laughs> sure, why not? Let's go back to the kitchen and see if uh, my good friend the Griffin will talk to us. To the kitchen. Uh, we'd been in this kitchen before. The mouse was gone. So were the contents of the soup pot. There wasn't anything left for us. We left. Quarter stretched. We retraced our steps. The darkness fell. The darkness fell to pain. Something like a thick pain was thrown. The air in front of us. A minute to the point. Someone blowing smoke from a person to the bottom. It was rolled in a ragged shroud. Something flies into the face. It was the burning hatred of the universe, even the death of the universe. It had been driven by a hatred of all living things. A ghost! Bugger! It's a sound! It wasn't anything she or I could do to deal with the pain of her physical body. The whole thing back to the gun.
slip away while I'm still trying. Our life is incredibly cold. It's But there was no time to do this. And spot opening between stairs. We're going to continue on. We're going to go We're going to go to the atrium. Let's see. Go through the atrium. We're gonna go to. We're not going to Lynx's room because that's not gonna really give us anything. We're gonna go to the stairs. Okay. There's nothing in the main hall. I'm gonna go to the terrace and see if uh, we get. If I can at least talk to them to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do. We return to the quiet terms of the Milliken Garden, and then we talk to the kid. Y'all I may say, you had Doc Ellis, okay. is going to take us back to Lynx's place and the atrium. Let's go to the right. Let's go into the clock tower. Here we go. It's slowly slowing open. The room was completely silent. That was no sign of life. There it is, our ticket to not get turned into Mitzvah. Ancient Sword was right. That's... oh, okay. The sword was, was the... is the rusted sword that we found. Uh, she ran over to where it lay. Looking at down at the sword, McGill muttered, Two ancient planes, the sacred line monster, the cursed muscle of day. What are you on about, Mag? You know something about Masamune? McGill said nothing. Well, it seems to mean something to you. It does. Uh huh. Something to do with old friends I don't know about? Not exactly. The enemy does. Not exactly. He is so Magus. <laughs> uh, to be a weird man. Well, whatever. Oi, numbnuts! Grab this thing for me, will ya? I was still standing by the doorway. Can you hold over to me? Who, me? Yeah, you, boy. You gonna make me lug the bloody thing all around the place? I'm just a scrawny little girl, aren't I? Call yourself a gentleman. Scrawny little. A jar. I knew there wasn't anything I could say to her. So, I walked over to the kid and picked up the sword like I was talking. Whoa! I nearly fell over. That thing was heavy. Good boy. Right, off to the chamber of death. Eyes on the prize, lads. Dragging the sword behind me, I followed the kid out of the room. Uh, we're gonna go up the stairs now. Excellent. Gonna go down the corridor. Continuing down the corridor. A stairway leading upward. We need to continue on. We're gonna go up the stairways. 
go up the stairway, and then at the very top is the the door. Excellent. Uh, this place is just as creepy as I remember. Lovely, grumbled kid. She was looking at the stains on the wall. The ceiling had been pulled back up, but there was no reason to believe it might not come grinding down again in a moment. Bearing in mind what Riddle told us about the room, uh, told us the room was called, it definitely wasn't somewhere we wanted to linger. Okay, it's right three times, left twice, right twice. Let me, let me double check that right quick. Right three, left two, right two. Okay. Quickly, hissed Mag, before crouching down and examining the ground for clues. Kit and I crouched down, too. What were we even looking for, though? What could the old man have left in this room that could possibly help us bring him back to reality? The flagstones of the floor were smeared with black, gooey substance, which gave off an odd, rotten aroma. I shook my head, trying to drive an uncomfortable thought from my mind. Kit saw me, and clearly wasn't doing much better herself. She slowly turned, positioning herself so that she was facing away from the stains on the wall. There was no point in thinking like that, I just had to try it again. Door closed. Door slashed over the gears, the light. I drove into the floor with all my might. A shock ran through the room. A beam of light scattered from the blade, covering the floor, the walls, and the ceiling racing forward. The ceiling gave an almighty judder that stopped. We made it. I sank to the floor helplessly, my heart racing. Hey, wh what's that? Kid was pointing at part of the wall. It was where we'd seen the message written in blood. Guess we found what we're looking for. Part of the wall had collapsed, revealing a cavity behind what had looked like a piece of solid stone. Inside, I could see something glinting faintly in the darkness. Kid reached in with her fingertips, carefully exacting whatever it was from within. It was a slender ring with a delicately engraved design that looked like over-flapping ferns. The ring was adorned with several small rubies in a pattern that resembled a bunch of grapes. It's the crest of Acacia. This must be the Acacian signet. Kid put the ring on her middle finger, where it sat uneasily. It didn't seem to be her size. The rubies gave off an eerie glint. Right, let's not spend any more time in here than we have to. We managed to foil the trap and retrieve the Acacian signet. I left the Alonzo where it stood, and we exited the room. With Kid in the lead, we headed downstairs. Oh, uh, we went down the stairs, continued right. Oh man, we gotta trace our steps all the way back. We continued on. We continued on. We continued on. Maybe if we're lucky, we won't get into an encounter. I'm gonna save. Maybe if we're lucky. Uh, we're gonna go down the stairs. Uh, we need to go to the atrium. Okay. Go into the atrium. Oh, we're gonna press on. We need to go down the stairs. Oh no, we need to go to the dungeon. Perfect. Go to the left.
stuff. Sturdy looking door. Gonna save. Okay, so now we got the ring. Now we show him the ring and he tells us who he is. <laughs> Having retrieved the Akasian signet, we returned to the old man's cell. As soon as we got there, McGill took a step forward and grabbed onto the bars. They creaked and groaned as he heaved them, gritting his teeth as he summoned every ounce of his might. Slowly, they bowed apart. He stepped into the cell through the gap, and Kid and I followed. The old man was exactly as we left him, staring into the space, muttering meaningless words. Kid walked over to him and crouched down. She grabbed him by the collar and yelled at him, Wakey, wakey, granddad! We've got a few questions for you. Here, yeah, get an eye full of this. Ring any bells, hmm? Kid waved the Akasian signet in his face, shaking him roughly up. All the while, the old man's head lolled as he limply allowed himself to be manhandled. I stepped in between them and tried to stop her. I tried to get between Kid and the old man. She glared at me. You're in the way, sir. We're here for answers, remember? But if you really want to help him, you can't chicken out now. But look at him. There's no helping him anymore, surely. This all ended for him long ago. I would not be so certain. It is not over. It still means something. He has simply decided to pretend not to see it. Yeah, but he's... It's not... O it's not over, you say. Oh. <clears throat> it's not over, you say? Struck by the man's sudden interruption, we all turned to look at him. A faint glimmer of light returned to his once vacant eyes. Uh, let me get a swig of water so I can start doing this, uh... Doing this, uh, voice right quick. That's right. None of this is over until we make Lynx pay. His eyes began to cloud once more. So my former allies have finally come for me. I am to blame. It is because of my indiscretion that the frozen flame was stolen. And that all of the Akasian dragoons, only I remain here in the manor. Now all is well, for you have returned. Oh, Melgid, Melgid, Zoranda, where have you been all this time? Do you all return to, like, Stoic? Never mind that, never mind that, Grandad, where's the frozen flame? Give us a clue, anything, come on, out with it. I couldn't decide if Kit sounded more annoyed or more desperate. The frozen flame... <laughs> The old man looked momentarily confused, and then a warm smile crossed his face. My word, Lady Riddle, it's been far too long since last I had the pleasure. Why, you need only turn the third candlestick from the left as you enter the main hall. Third from the left candlestick. I love these old school games where, like, you gotta just write down all these... Uh, th third from left. You gotta write down all this stuff so that you don't forget it. I mean, you know, I could look it up online, but like, back in the day, you just have to have a notepad next to you. I actually had a little notepad that I kept next to my um, chair when I would play video games, and I would put, I would write down uh, all the things that I needed, puzzles and all that. Um, Resident Evil's one of those that, like, as you replay it, uh, the puzzle will change, and so you have to, like, write down the, the, um, combination for, like, locks and things like that, like, you know, it's something that, that something like this where I have to write down something so I don't forget it, it just takes me back. The third candlestick from the left. That will open the underground vault, as you know. Kid wrapped her arms around the old man and held him tight. And then in a trembling voice, she whispered, I'm sorry. I, I promise we'll get it back. Uh, 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 
The man recoiled in horror and then began to sob once more. I am to blame. It's all my fault. Forgive me. Forgive me. Look, if you want to get out of here, now's your chance. But it was no use. He was busy, too busy cowering and wailing to hear me. Oh, it was me. Whoops. We're done here, Serge. We can't help him. And there's things we need to be doing. Thank you, I whispered to the old man before following Kid and McGill out of the dungeon. The plot thickens. After making our way down the corridor, we came to a branch in the path. Uh, da, da, da. We need to go through the atrium. So now we're going to the main hall. Mm-hmm. We're in the atrium. We're going to continue on. We need to go as soon as we can up the stairs. going to save right quick. towards the stairs yes so something I've kind of noticed is you don't really get into an encounter if you if you go the way you're supposed to if you like if you take a wrong turn or something that's when you get an encounter and then I think maybe encounters just kind of like they spawn uh, at a certain point after you do something uh, let's see we need to go to the main hall Can you continued Go inside. Looks like the coast is clear. Coast is clear. Okay. Silence. Da -da 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 -da. Several portraits, and they looked at a third candlestick from third candlestick from the left. Whispered kid. One, two, three. There. She reached out towards it. I held my breath as I watched. Say your prayers, Lynx. We're coming for you. Get to the candlestick. The room trembled with a sudden rhythmic rumbling sound, as if a massive gear was turning. For a moment, I felt a strange sensation as if I was feeling it. It started to stagger. The entire room seemed to be moving and down. Wow, 
that's that's tell that's deep. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Not the only kid. That's that's a really good uh um It's like it's like uh watching a movie over again and knowing like what the outcome is and then like finding a little hint about the end that you missed and, and seeing and, and seeing that like show up uh, um, you know like rewatching a film and, and seeing something like that. I mean, it's that's crazy I was overwhelmed by the inexplicable oddness of the idea not the only kid you got that right boss she noticed immediately Course. Kid, I was back in the morning. Trying to catch flaws, mate? Oh, sorry. It's just that for a moment there, it felt like you were someone else. Like you were about. Kid gave me a confused look, tilting her head. It must be because you were drawn near to the first flame. The girl's voice was soft as ever, slipped unbidden in the shadows. Kid turned towards him with another passive, puzzled frown. It is, there is another self within you struggling against the pull of the abyss. What had she been talking about? A crash split the silence, as if we collided with something. Screech! A loud metallic scraping filled the air. The room rocked and finally came to a halt. Looks like the end of the line. All change.
someone led astray by it. It even led to a kingdom's ruin, a kingdom that's prosperous. Yet, now a little more fragments and dust, its name lost in history. For a moment, I thought I heard a glint of pain and sadness in the voice, but maybe it was just my nerves. Wait, how do you know all this, Michael? I said nothing. He only stared at me. Suddenly, McGill stopped in his tracks. Wait. Huh? Kit turned around, puzzled just then. A powerful light surged across the floor, and a ring-shaped sigil of... <laughs> Damn it! A blood circle! Kit and McGill were at least quick enough to try and jump clear, but they weren't quick enough. The three of us were trapped in the circle of blinding light. Oh, cool. Sigil rotated left and right, almost in the center, cutting off all our roads to escape. That was <sighs> We're trapped. So, the wall of heat near me blew up the walls. I got to find the road. Right three, left two. Right three, left two. A wall of heat and wind blew up around us, swirling lights and spirals of light sails were around Don't let the light mesmerize you. Cover your eyes. Raise its hand and put it in its Turn with the light right against it. There has to be a way out. I barely understand the book that's going on. It's like a question of the wall. Spot, spot. <laughs> Be careful. Merely to touch it is more than enough to harm you. Stay well back. Absolutely. Suddenly, my body felt light, and I staggered two or three steps forward. We were back in the deserted passageway we'd been walking down before the blood circle had appeared. The sigil had vanished from the floor, and everything was silent, as if nothing had ever been amiss. And then I looked up. <laughs> Looks like we finally made it, boys. Kid strolled up to the door with a wicked grin on her face. The true frozen flame awaits.
McGill's oh whoops wrong wrong character McGill's eyes gave a glint from behind the mask like glass catching a moonlight in the darkness of night let's go Kid so this is the place huh Kid narrowed her eyes, straining to see our surroundings in the darkness. Oof. A vast, pitch black expanse surrounded us, whichever way we looked, as if it entered an impossibly vast cave. We were in a place forgotten by time. Unknown to the world, hidden deep within the bowels of the night. A gentle crimson light hovered in the darkness. The frozen flame. All right, now it's ours. The light of the flame meant that we had jumped off of responding to Kit's voice. What the heck is this place? This mountain's a bloody rubble everywhere. Gil took a step further out and said in a whisper, it was almost a friend. No, it can't be. Oh, it is. The ruins of the lost kingdom of ages. Oh, my God. Whew. All right. That's a Chrono Trigger reference. The voice drifted down through the Kid looked up in shock. Links, I'll kick your flea bitten arse so hard you'll kiss the moon. <laughs> Kid pulled her knife from her belt and threw it as hard as she could. <laughs> it fell to the floor with a clay as it knocked, all knocked out of the air by the sounds of the head. Still the same. No way to greet him. Smarmy bastard. Get rid of the top of the And you, Shadow. I have, I'll have none of your tricks. You must have been a fool if you made it all fall for that again. The girl who had been quietly slipping into the darkness that surrounded us stopped dead in his tracks. So this was the end of the sentence. Deadly manner, a man who had murdered the closest thing Kid had to a family, who had assassinated General Viper and erected the Order of the Acacia, eradicated the Order of Acacia Dragoons. A pleasure this was, my dear Kid. I must say, following the trail of friend, better crumbs I laid for you at close. Link's narrowed his eyes as his lips twisted into a snarl. There's something unsettling and funny about that face. You know what I want, kid. Give me the stone you carry. Stone? Kid, it have some kind of jewel I don't know about? <laughs> don't know what you're on about, mate. She just about managed to recover her composure, narrowing her eyes for a joy. Spare me the act, child. I know that you have it. I know she gave it to you. Hand over the time egg now. Look at for a while, I don't hurt you. You're dreaming, you think. Give it to the horse of you. Get your back. It's all I got left over. I'll never let go of it. Not for anyone. Definitely not for you. I'll tell you what's gonna happen, you bastard. First I'm gonna take the frozen plate, and then I'm gonna ram it down your throat. Encourage me, fool. I was hoping this might be a civilized exchange. But it seems my words only fall on your deaf ears. You are determined to repeat your past errors. Link's moved his hand. 
now to the grip of an ornate golden saber that hung from his belt. <laughs> they definitely didn't go that route with him in the game, let me tell you. Last time I showed you mercy and let you leave life. That was a mistake, one which I mean to correct. Serge McGill. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea who said it. Serge McGill, stay back. Kid took a step forward, glaring at Lynx, her gaze unflinching. This ends here now. You'll pay for what you've done. You'll pay for all that you did to Luca. With a scream, Kid leapt into the air like a bird taking flight. Foot lashed out. Silent kick aimed right at the side of Lynx's head. There was no Where Lynx had been mere moments landed immediately and launched herself back into the air, putting full force of her momentum into another kick. This time Lynx came back and her hands foot swung past him with a hair's breadth of her from his nose. And then it was Lynx's turn. He lashed out with a safe carbon arc in the air in front of him. The kid was ready to go. It had already jumped back to a safe distance. The two glared at each other from the mirror. Red line appeared on the kid's cheek, slowly focus and took it out of the light. Wow, okay. Wow. That's, um... And that's where the scar came from. That's... Oh, okay. Kid! The flash, she launched herself into yet another attack. It was dodged inside and made a strike with her. The pillar was standing there. The kid moved awkwardly. Lynx was on her like a bird of prey before she could fully recover. There was a gasp. The car was Lynx. Lynx drove his knee into the pit of her stomach, kicking her ass. Steady, steady, steady. With that beat, all of her, Lynx gave Kid a nurse's kick to the side. She landed on a pile of her body rolling. Her name as I charged to the place. Killed the 
for crying out loud. Fine, you win. Here, have your damn rock. Link's grip on my throat loosened. Groaning with pain, Kid reached a shaky hand into her shirt. I knew you would come around in the end. Link's threw my body on the ground and walked over toward her. Just shut up and take it, you bastard. It's all you deserve. With all the strength she could muster, Kid lashed out at Link's with her right hand. G he leapt back in a desperate attempt to evade the blow, but it was too late. Kid's nails, sharp as a cat's claws, raked mercilessly in his face. Link's roared with pain. He staggered, clutching his left eye. Blood oozed through the gaps in his fingers. You wretched little shit of a girl. Link stood awkwardly, awkwardly, still clutching the wound on his face. The fingers of his free hand arched in a, into furious talons as he walked to, back towards Kid, who lay still on the ground. I'll kill you all. He kicked her hard, concentrating all his wrath and venom into the blow. Kid grasped with all the wind knocked out of her, yet more blood ran from her mouth as her body rolled across the floor. Kid, I yelled hoarsely, clutching my burning throat with one hand. Links turned his head slowly to look at me, one eye fixing on me coldly as it came into view. He took a step towards me. Yes, perhaps it would be better to start with you. My dear kid, rest assured that your friend's death will be a most elaborate and painful one. You will truly know what it means to suffer, boy. I will put you through the same suffering as I did that Luca woman. The kid's body stirred with shock and horror. Her eyes slowly opened, fixing on Lynx. They were wild eyes, stained with the blood that poured from her brow. Grating her teeth, she staggered to her feet. Thanks. And, a, and an explosion of light Another light began to form somewhere near Kid's chest, resonating with the light from the frozen flame. The twin lights entwined, twirling slowly upward. And as it rose, the golden spiral spread. No, this can't be. Link stood motionless, transfixed by the spectacle. Was this the time egg's power? Kid screamed as a raging blaze of light engulfed her. I'll never let you do it again. I'll never let you steal from me again. Bathed in the blood, her body shook. Blood red tears dripped from her eyes as they looked upon him. And as they took on her distance. And then she collapsed with the ground, as if all the life had gone out. shattered, its fragments raining down on the world, becoming shards of sorrow and anguish. The world around us drifted into pieces. It swallowed us, engulfed us. We were consumed, 
locked into the void. And then a girl's scream echoed in the darkness. That voice. Was that kid? It sounded just like... No. This is all wrong. The black vortex. It surround us. surrounds us. No. Stop. Oh, wow. Where am I? I have lost everything, and now I can but wonder. The world drifts, and time is a blur. There is only an endless, unknowable sea. This is where time begins and ends. This is where all life finds peace. I see myself as a baby, crying next to my mother, an exhausted yet proud look upon her face. I see myself aged and wizened, waiting to succumb to death's embrace with a smile. I see countless incarnations of myself walking time's intricate corridors as a ghost. This is the place where countless worlds overlap and infinite dreams play out. If only I could rest here for eternity. If only I could free myself from all my bonds and sleep here. But I hear it calling me. I hear the song. Kid. Kid, please. C can you hear me? Kid. Kid, say something. Kid, say that you'll stay with me. Who's that? Who is calling me? you're awake I heard a song it was beautiful it was the song that Luca loved kid closed her eyes and her face glowed with a warm smile I'll never forget that song it makes me want to cry whenever I hear it I'm just glad you're back it felt like I was losing you like you were going somewhere far far away before I knew it I was humming the song for you I don't know if I ever mentioned it, but I wrote it when I first started out as a musician. <laughs> I knew you liked it, so I... Kid gave a gentle nod. It was you. You were the one who called me back. That was you calling me name. Thanks, Serge. It's okay. It's okay now. I'm back. Suddenly, she gasps, <laughs> gasps with pain. Link's saber had plunged deep into her right shoulder. Oh, shit. Towering over this I told you. I told you I would kill you. She had no strength to fight. What was I going to do? Attack Enough! Stunned, we looked toward the intruder. You! There stood an old crow. How'd she made it all the way down?
to McGill's magic, we managed to escape the manor alive. But the light of torches dotted the forest, and we could hear soldiers calling to one another. We, we stopped briefly in the darkness of the woods, and Kid leaned heavily on a tree, desperately trying to find her ragged breathing. It was a terrible wound she'd suffered, and seemed to be taking its toll. Are you okay, Kid? Yeah, don't worry about me, mate. We're surrounded. It won't be long until they find us, said Miguel, his eyes cautiously scanning the area. Kid raised her head to look at me. It's me and Miguel they want. Get out of here, Serge. Let's... It's you. It's us they want, not you. What are you saying? I'm not leaving you here. Look at you. You can barely stand. It's not in our care, handle. And besides, I've got Miguel with me. If they catch us with you, they won't go easy on you. But... I remember everything. I remembered another me. A me from a long, long time ago. Slowly, kid averted her gaze, looking up at the night sky. I have to go. The stars reflected in her eyes, and suddenly she looked like Wow. 
last traces of her shadow vanished. Vanished towards a place I might never reach again. No, kid. I leapt to my feet, meaning to chase after her, but her shadows blocked my path. You kill her? Without saying a word, he slowly shook his head. Behind the mask, I saw a shadow of sadness in his eyes. Then the shadow withdrew and melted into the darkness. I killed her. Kid, wait, don't leave me. I screamed into the night, but there was no reply. Black silence swallowed my cries. Kid, kid. another tale. Perhaps one day I'll see Kid, McGill, and Riddle again. One day. Somewhere at another time and another world. Perhaps none of us will even realize it. But that's a story for another day. For now I must put down my pen. closed my grandfather's diary. And then from downstairs, I heard my mother calling. Did you hear me? Your friend's here. Nimble footsteps charged up the stairs. The door flew open. In tumbled a young girl. A girl who seemed somehow familiar. Hey, Serge, it's a beautiful day for adventure. I found a run-down old man off the woods to the north. You want to come go exploring? Let's get out of here. What a beautiful pixelated picture. <laughs> Difficulties aside, that's it. Oh, glad that ended when it did, because my my heart wasn't gonna take much more of that. Oh, I have a deep appreciation for this because it's it's tied to something that I love so much, and I I love the fact that like I mean. Maybe when they wrote this, they purposely wrote it vague enough that they could tie everything up with a bow later on, but just to see the traces of, and I mean, you know, like, uh, the whole idea of, like, Surge growing up with, like, kid, I mean, that doesn't happen in the cross, but there, there's a sort of, like, um, poeticness about it. can't quite put in words, but it, it, it's nice how there are certain things that are said in the game that they, they literally uh, um, reference later in Chrono Cross, and so it's, it's really, it was really rewarding to, to just like, uh, see that. But one of the things that I really like about Chrono Cross more than Chrono Trigger is that Chrono Cross is about no matter what, no matter where, whether it's through time or dimensions, the bonds of companionship, friendship, love, rivalry, e even hatred, all of those things go past the flow of time, go past fate, all of it. No matter what, our connections will always persevere. And the, the line of, you know, whether it's another time or another world, spiritual when I was younger, but uh, nowadays I like to be, I like to consider myself hopeful. 
hopeful. <laughs> um, maybe not so much spiritual, but definitely hopeful. I hope that that we're all connected. I exactly hope that this series really touches on. So, look at that beautiful vista. Yeah, kids, kids design really like every, all three of their designs are just like oh okay because technically McGill's not in Chrono Cross. Finn, nice. <laughs> 